Sitting Ducks by the Canadian artist Michael Bedard is his best-known work. It was created in the early 80s and is also the key work to clarify the concept of fragility and humor, which are both present at the same time in Bedard's paintings. The picture shows three ducks, each sitting in a chair against a wall, sunning themselves and relaxing. The left hand and middle duck look at the viewer, while the right hand duck focuses its attention on two bullet holes in the wall, with its head turned upward toward the middle of the picture. The viewer gazes directly upon the depicted scene at eye level with the ducks that seem to be very close. This impression is strengthened by the fact that the gaze of the duck in the center falls directly on the viewer. The focus on these three figures masks out the surroundings and with them the external world. If one drew crosshairs across the surface of the picture, they would cross precisely on the middle duck. This duck determines the axis of symmetry. The many lines in the foreground form a grid together. This scaffolding provides a firm and static structure for the picture and creates an impression of balance and calm. It reflects the calm of the depicted scene. While the lines in the foreground result in sharp corners, curved lines dominate in the middle ground. The arched form of the backs of the chairs is repeated in the arched form of the ducks' heads and feet. The ducks and the chairs achieve an impression of gentleness and lack of any tension. If the chairs had sharp edges instead of curves, the impression would be different. While the form and arrangement of the heads of the left hand and middle ducks makes them seem a supplement to the chairs, the head of the right hand duck is set off markedly from its chair. Through graphic means, the right hand duck thus displays a mind of its own, which is significant for the interpretation of the picture. Although the picture strongly expresses symmetry, Bedard avoids having the left hand and right hand halves of the picture mirror each other. This impression would arise if the left hand and right hand ducks both wore a shirt or if neither of them did. If one of the two held his drink in the left hand and the other in the right hand, or if the colors of the frames of their glasses were identical. To recognize these differences, the viewer is made to perceive the picture more precisely. This underscores the position of the right hand duck's head, giving its attention to the bullet hole's high significance. The viewer is thus much more conscious of this duck's observation. The ducks thereby have differing stages of perception, increasing from left to right. The left hand duck enjoys its drink and seems to be content. Since its eyes cannot be seen behind the sunglasses, it is not clear whether the duck might be dozing. The middle duck is more awake, since it is pursuing an intellectual activity, namely reading. The eyes are visible above the spectacles, and it appears to be just looking up, either because it has noticed the viewer, or because it has heard the sound of the gunshots. The right-hand duck is the only one of the three that has noticed the bullet holes. The position of its head points away from the viewer, towards the wall. The significance of the picture is treated differently in accordance with the three picture zones. The floor in the foreground is smooth and each tile exhibits a similar but varied structure. The chairs and the ducks in the middle ground are very smooth and create the picture's strongest three-dimensional effect. The wall in the background, by contrast, is not smooth, but when magnified, appears very strongly textured. It creates the impression of a plastered surface quite distinct from the smooth ducks and chairs. This handling of the wall, mimicking stucco, is a detail bringing some movement into the otherwise very static and homogeneous broad surface. The picture has an intensely spatial effect, even though only a very limited amount of depth is depicted, which does not exactly make the portrayal of three-dimensionality easy. The floor tiles, which are largest at the lower edge of the picture and smallest at the wall, are foreshortened. The same is true of the chair legs, 
which are larger in the front than in the back. Overlapping is found in the chairs, which underscore the front, floor, and back wall of the painting. The ducks, which sit in front of the backs of the chairs, and whose feet extend beyond the front of the seats of the chairs, also create a spatial depth. Light and shadow create plasticity in the picture. The source of the light, the sun, is behind the viewer on the right-hand side. The chairs, ducks, and drinking glasses cast shadows to the left. The left-hand edge of the tiles lies in shadow. And the elements of the chairs, like the armrests, and the spectacles show highlights on the right-hand side. Finally, the components of the picture that seem spatial, the ducks and the chairs, show a range of shades between brightness and darkness, which gives these bodies an intense plasticity. Another means customarily used in paintings to suggest pictorial space is not in evidence in sitting ducks, the representation of motion. The picture's theme does not give meaningful room for a figure striding into the pictorial space to underscore spatiality. Such a motion would disturb the calmness in the picture, which is, after all, consciously built up. The three-dimensionality must thus be created by Bedard through the combination of the other elements. Bedard's picture, Sitting Ducks, like many other paintings by this artist, is more a description like that in A Still Life than a representation of action. It is a rather contemplative work. Thus, it is reminiscent of the paintings of the Dutch 17th century painter Jan Vermeer, who created human still lifes. As a whole, on the first glance, the work conveys calmness and quiet, which makes the second glance at the picture incongruous. A closer look disturbs the initial impression of serenity when the viewer perceives the bullet holes in the wall. Bedard ensures they are noticed in two ways. First, through the picture's strongest color contrast between the black holes and the white wall. And second, through the position of the right-hand duck's head. By following the direction of the duck's gaze, one finds the holes in the wall. The bullet holes could have been there for quite some time and might merely be viewed by the duck. On the other hand, they could also have just been made. The viewer deduces which one of the two alternatives is more probable from the middle duck. It appears as if this duck were just being startled out of its concentration on what it is reading and just beginning to comprehend the actual situation. Ultimately, the painting's title, Sitting Ducks, provides another hint. This expression means an easy target, a totally defenseless person and the picture aims to depict precisely this situation. It is true that Bedard painted three ducks that are literally sitting, but the double meaning is his humorous way of portraying the picture's content. Viewers of the picture who see merely three ducks that are sitting, and for whom the title simply means that ducks are sitting on chairs, do not recognize the actual content of the work. Those viewers who recognize the meaning of the bullet holes and of the middle duck's gaze, and who are familiar with the colloquial meaning of the expression sitting ducks, however, see the picture in a completely different light and grasp the core content of the work, especially after the murder of the former Beatle, John Lennon, in 1980. Many people began thinking of the transience of life, which can come to a sudden end through external impact. Until then, it seemed impossible that a universal idol could be murdered for no comprehensible reason, and many believed that the same could ultimately happen to anyone if even Lenin was not immune to it. Bedard's sitting ducks underscores this fragility. It is painted like a still life, and could be interpreted as a still frame from a movie. The painting leaves it up to the viewer to imagine what happens next, and to decide whether more shots will ring out this time not necessarily missing their target. It is also important to Bedard to involve the viewer, to whom he leaves up the conclusions to be drawn from the picture. Bedard's intention is 
not to prescribe a particular path that everyone must take in the same direction, but to trigger a thought process. So his pictures create a cognitive dissonance. The viewer perceives contradictory signals that do not fit together. This, in turn, promotes the viewer's thinking about the content and meaning of the picture's theme. Bedard uses humor to reduce the tension of the depicted situation. This humor includes various elements, for example, the appearance of the ducks and the use of props, sunglasses, Hawaiian shirt, glasses, book, that turn the situation into an absurdity. The book title, Suntan, underscores the duck's presumable intention in sunbathing. That the absolutely white ducks are anything but suntan is an additional humorous aspect. Seemingly opposed aspects of life are brought together in Bedard's pictures. One doesn't expect them in this combination and simultaneous depiction. This is at its most conspicuous in the portrayal of the fragility of human life and in the reproduction of a humorous situation. Prior to Bedard's painting, it was thought that serious themes are too important to be mixed in with humor. On the other hand, it was thought that humor should not contain anything depressing in order to avoid spoiling the fun. But Bedard combines fragility and humor, thus shaking up all the conventions. This approach seems unfamiliar and thus confusing at first glance. The concept of uniting the two is fascinating, however, because it permits an advance into a newer dimension that enables a wholly different perception of reality, expanding the viewer's consciousness. The painting Sitting Ducks by Michael Bedard his signature piece and the starting point for a series of unconventional paintings is a masterpiece of contemporary art.